2023. The time is now 10:45 in the morning. We are over here at the Guam Community College uh, Learning Resource Center, uh, located in uh, Room 112. Um, we have previously just passed around the the agenda and the minutes of the previous minutes. So uh, we're going to go through the, the process of uh, uh, call to order. So this meeting is now here by call to order, and I will be uh, doing a roll call by agency name. And sir, uh, here or present, if you're here. <coughs> Guam Police Department, present. Guam Airport Police. Guam Port Police. Guam Attorney General, Guam Customs and Quarantine, present. Guam Department of Corrections, present. Division of Aquatic and Wildlife Resources, Guam Department of Agriculture, present. University of Guam, Guam Community College, Unified Courts of Guam, Marshall Judiciary, Guam Fire Department, Present. Unified Courts of Guam Probation, Guam Department of Administration, Personal Services Division, Present. Department of Youth Affairs, Present. Guam International Airport Authority, Aircraft Rescue, Fire Fighting, ARF. Present. And then uh, we have uh, Park Patrol. Present. We have Forum. Agenda item uh, Roman numeral 2, review and approval of minutes from March 2022. So before you, you have uh, been given a few minutes to uh, take a look at it and um, analyze if everything is um, in order, or if there's some clarification or recommendations for edits, uh, I open the floor at this time. Mr. Weekly. I make a motion to approve the post commission meeting minutes of Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022, subject to corrections. Do you have any motions? Do you have any seconds to motion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, <clears throat> Roman numeral three, Chairman, Vice Chairman remarks. Um, maybe what I can do is ask uh, the acting uh, interim executive director to, to start, and then we'll go to the uh, vice chair and myself. Well, good morning, everyone. And, uh, I guess it's Happy New Year. We haven't had a meeting for a while. Um, just to give you an update on what's going on. Um, we have uh, been speaking with the governor and lieutenant governor regarding uh, the post commission, and uh, they've we've had a couple of meetings already, uh, actually three, and so we're trying our best to get a a separate office that would possibly be at, at the Department of Administration down at GC uh, ITC, and they will have a, a, a <coughs> we already gave them a proposal. Uh, uh, program coordinator and also an administrative uh, assistant uh, to start up uh, a separate entity uh, outside of the uh, GCC. And we also give them price quotes on, on the rental of the place, the facility, um, excuse me, the furniture, and uh, some uh, budget uh, uh, considerations. So that's that's pending right now. On the other part is so uh, they're trying to get find the funding for it, and uh, they already talked about possibly um, having a candidate, which we discuss later just down the road here uh, for the executive director because we've been doing this acting stuff, and this position of course requires much more than what I'm able to provide with um, my current position as the director of DOC. And uh, being that also is that we finally identified funding for the Police One uh, software, which is a learning management system, 
that currently is at the airport police and it's going to be um, uh, agency wide in all the law enforcement. And we got enough money to cover all the agencies. Uh, implementation and so that's about I believe sixty thousand dollars if I remember correctly. So uh, on the seventeenth I believe we have a um, a meeting with all the trainers and representatives from uh, the post commission and what is going to happen is uh, airport police is going to give a a um, orientation on what the software can do and they're probably going to have uh, also uh, hopefully um, the agency that is um, Police One or Lexa Fault who will be on the line to uh, answer questions also. So um, this is what uh, Dr. Fee and myself have been working on for quite some time and finally we got the ball rolling. And uh, essentially what it's going to be is that certain types of training that you want to be done uh, can be done on online whether it be um, use of force, uh, handling those with mental disabilities, or um, sexual harassment, or professional ethics, all these other things that you would like to have. And it also has a, a system in which they will notify each employee of when these uh, certain trainings must be done. It, uh, it will also give the administrator the ability to look who's completing it and also give uh, automatic notifications. So it's a quite a robust uh, software system and that will be available to all the agencies and what we're going to propose to have on the 17th is it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning and it will be at Guam Airport, Guam Airport and uh, they will keep a briefing on that particular thing. So I think Ray has some update on the uh, venue for the train. Okay. Okay. The training will take place on the 17th over at the new art facility on the other side. Okay. On the other side. Instead okay. of going over to the uh, conference room, okay. there was a conflicting schedule. So when I did so that uh, also, also the guys will give you guys a tour of the station. State the, of the art. State of the art. Yes. Uh, very nice. State of the art. State of the art. State of the art. State of the art. <laughs> yes. Chief, what time is the It's going to be at 10 as Chief Also, the, uh, uh, actually, if any of you guys, uh, I was talking to uh, LT uh, Airport Police uh, Ray Rages. If any of you guys have some inputs, get your, uh, your, your flash. We have a smart uh, monitor. Okay. You can, you can insert it and, and share with uh, LT as it goes on. Okay. Okay, so, take place over so the only thing I need to add uh, before Chief Bob uh, ends is, um, so one of the things that we need to do is establish a, uh, a spreadsheet with everybody's name, uh, I think it's name, email, and uh, I'm not sure if it's an ID number, but that is necessary in order for the POCs at a later date to start uh, conducting the inputs to be able to get you guys tied in to the system. So uh, that'll be discussed further on, uh, is it the Friday when you meet on that date? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so sorry about that. Okay. That's, that's pretty much it. Can I request that we get specifications in that? Yeah, we can send it out. Yes. If, if it's okay. You know. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Also, Chief, there will be a handout uh, issued out to uh, AP, LT, uh, Thank you. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so, hey, good morning, guys. Happy New Year. And uh, I know it's been a long, gruesome year. Uh, here today, we have uh, a lot of the department and agencies has a lot of agenda uh, that we were packing to try and get out of the way, especially the beginning of the year. But as the Vice Chair, uh, appreciation of uh, you guys coming in and, and trying to understand more of the you know the structure here uh, that's going on and also we can recap on all these uh, uh, I guess we can go back and focus on, on a couple of the uh, line items that are actually been going on and on the decertification process of employees and uh, I just want to touch base on that we're not trying to put anyone out we're trying to help them remedy uh, actually a program that's in place 
And like I said, I'll recap. That program actually, I adopted into the airport art. And it really works. Uh, honestly, it really works. So no one has been pushed out the door forcefully. It assisted them, and the reason why it's very effective, it's an occupational doctor that's certified that will assist. And upon that, just say, I'll, I'll cut it short. If it's a permanent uh, physical nature, the employee or police officer has to go throughout his career, the doctor is the voice for that employee and employer where he can actually manifest a letter to the retirement and say he cannot return back to his normal self. It's a permanent injury and it's re irreversible versus our employees go out and just grab it from a PCP, yes, yeah, probably a clinical position. That is not a certified occupation and believe me guys, I've heard a lot. Retirement has a problem with that. And that's where the challenge is at for our employees. And that's where we, as uh, you know, chiefs and directors, come in to assist these employees to help them uh, every every means possible. Okay, and that's that's the only thing I want. And one thing at a time, we're here to try and get this resolved. Uh, the process that uh, through all the meetings we've been having with the governor and the lieutenant governor, very eager to put this in place. And it's very helpful for each and every one employee that, uh, you know, you have 40 recruits coming in. You cannot report, I mean, promote all 40. But if you have a tier structure that says non-supervisors can matter, it is very helpful. And it's a very, very effective way of bringing around welfare to the department. And that's all this is. It's very helpful. And that's why. Okay. Thank you, Chief Frey. Uh, just keep mine short. Good morning, everybody, and once again, Happy New Year. I'm hoping everybody had a uh, well-rested uh, last couple of months and we're settling down from the holidays. New year, new agenda, some agendas still remain. Uh, you know, there's an old Latin saying about tabula rasa, clear, clean slate. You know, whatever you did in the past, learn from the mistakes that you made, um, pick yourself up, move forward, and let's keep going. Um, we are here today uh, to, to discuss some of the issues and challenges that we've had in the past, and hopefully we get to a point where we fix them. Uh, and as Chief Bob had mentioned, we're, we're, we're working with the, the Lieutenant Governor's Office on creating a much more firm organizational structure with uh, much more appropriate levels of funding to be able to, to, to move uh, and hit some of the projects that we've been trying to do. For many of you, you're probably aware that running a commission with uh, with, with, with only very limited part-time support is, is challenging, especially when your your main bread and butter is something else, and, and you got to you got to prioritize. So in the meantime, we've been trying to make do with what we have and, and, and move forward. We recognize that there are challenges in order for us to move forward. We're addressing that. So without uh, further ado, I, I think that I'm just going to end it there and thank you once again. Thank you everybody for uh, updating your letters uh, to identify the uh, representatives for your respective agencies. Um, it's very well appreciated. And so now without further ado, we'll go into uh, Roman Numeral number five under the old business. Uh, first item up is the post development of rules and process for peace officers decertification. Formalize committee and establish a plan of action to be developed. And the discussion is going to be done by the vice chair. We talked about it earlier. So, Chief Gray? Yes. Uh, going back again to the subject matter. Uh, I will not be sharing this if it's ineffective for the commission to at least adopt. And let's give it a try in the department. I, I, I will stand behind that this program actually exists in art, but I'm not under the DOE. It's under the SOP of the airport department. Okay? And that's, I just want to make a correction on that. There is a mandate of an annual uh, uh, live fire that art has to undergo annually. But as far as the annual physical, 
It's actually an adopted DOD to an SOP for the government of one aircraft rescue fire. And it, it, it safeguards each and every one. And so uh, if there's any questions regarding the abuse of this, that doctor, occupational doctor guys is up front. He will tell us if an employee is fit to perform or not fit to perform. And that's why we certify an employee with all the proper documentation is from a certified physician is unknown. I, I, I totally disagree. You know, that's that's a lot uh, on employee burdens. But this, again, like I said, uh, if you have any questions regarding the uh, program, I am I, I can come by your, your department and do a one-on-one -on -one and make you understand it more firmly instead of, I know some of us are, are it's challenging when we come to a form. Uh, everybody has that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm ashamed to say things. Not to worry about it. There's no help but to be violated. It's actually an upfront to assist. I'm here to assist. And that's all I want to offer to each and every department here. And uh, Artist One, one that actually has been practicing this since we came across since 1995. Uh, under the government. So, Mr. So can you send us uh, your policy? Yes, I can do that. And uh, yes, Chief, just a recommendation. If you do like a Zoom uh, conference, you can reach everybody like at one time. Yeah. Or you can have like maybe yeah, two I can, I can, I can do that. You can have Q and A's and everything. And then if you put out an email, ask for questions in advance, and then you can answer them or whatever it is. But yeah, I can do that. I, yes. recommend, I recommend that. That way you can reach a greater number of people. Uh, I can help you this. Uh, we did uh, we did a presentation here, Chief. If you guys can recall, yes. But then I do uh, I do want to reach, and I, it was a discussion with the Lieutenant Governor. Sure. And one of the, the things I would like to do is do a one on one with the department. Oh. And, and in that way, if there's any question with the uh, up management, yeah. you know, levels, at least I'm there to answer the questions. Yeah. But. I will support like uh, what Chief Bob's asking. Sure. All these documents that we have, I'll share it. I'll, I'll issue it. It's very simple. Because I tell you, just to get all the firefighters into one room is very difficult. We've got yes. two shifts. They're spread out throughout the entire island. Right. And they but then we're going to deal first with the uh, management okay. level in the department, sure. and that's where we trickle uh, down. As long as we have that one-on-one -on -one with the management levels in the department, I believe the, the with the documents it will trickle down to all the subordinates. And if there's any questions with the subordinates, I can, I'm always free. Chief, I'm available 24-7. And you can wake, him up, uh, wake me up 2 in the morning or 3. Or yeah, yeah, you can <laughs> but uh, please, uh, we're here. Uh, I'm here. And it's very effective. We'll help each other. I can, I can surely say this. It works. Okay, It works for our uh, I never had uh, a permanent profile firefighter because the enticement here is this firefighter, if the doctor seems that actually he's not, he is actually faking it or not, this doctor will tell us that. But he's going to call in that employee and he's going to sit him down and tell him the consequences what's going to happen. Okay? And that's where. That's where it equals out people for the employee and for the employer. That's how we remedy this. And believe me guys, my guys, they are not ready to go and play with this because these doctors are from. Chief, with the majority of us here being line agencies, yes. DOA is the perfect uh, one to talk to first. Yes, I will. Yeah, I will. Because when what we do is we require them to go to DOA, DOA will require yes. them to go to a doctor. Yes. And exactly what you're saying, but it channels to DOA, not to the fire department. Yes. So what we're going to do, uh, Francis, is uh, we'll have HR, I'll have uh, Miss Virginia model mm -hmm. uh, with Miss Vivian Affleby and myself. We'll come down and, you know. And if you do that with DOA, you yeah. just knock out all the line agencies. Including that way, GPD, GPD. I like the idea. And that way, now if it's uh, actually a version of the one-on-one, -on -one, I would like to have the approval from DOA is it okay with HR and myself, we can do a one-on-one uh, -on -one with the departments and, you know, to make it effective if needed. Because if we do currently, we do suspect that they're faking it, we channel it to DOA and they get a third-party position. Yes.
Yeah, because it's it's a better uh, uh, occupational uh, position. Yes, sir. So just a comment. So sure. you know, I, uh, I agree that we should have like a subcommittee to work on yes. the certification. Yes. The decertification process. Yes, sir. Because we're, we're so hell bent and focused on medical, right? Uh, or failing the PFP, we are not showing up. But right. when there's a whole gamut of things that be certified officer, what roles are convicted? Those that are arrested, those that you know have a conviction for DOI, you know, and what we don't know is the effect, right? If, because we've been in existence, the commission itself has been in existence for how long? How many how many no, no, no. police officers have been decertified? Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Right. right? Zero yeah. peace officers have been certified. How many peace officers are I talk about the law? How many police officers have been convicted of a crime and are sitting up at Bank of Conscious Facility? Right? How many of those have been certified? Yeah. Yeah. Right? So we, we, we get stuck on this medical and gift duty, but yeah. there's a whole range of stuff in exactly. it from perjuring yourself and the the grand the, the, yes. the grand jury. Perjuring yourself or in a criminal trial, right. you know, uh, falsification of police reports, all kinds of stuff. Right. You know, and, you know, and sometimes there's no tunnel vision on this one thing. Yes. Because everybody wants to just talk about PFQT. Right? And, that's, that, and, and, and I'm, I'm glad Chief you brought that up. is just one exactly. sliver of, you know, one slice of the dot, the line. There's a, the, the whole thing is to do it. to do that as a good value. Right. So I agree, we, we table this until there's a subcommittee for right. to determine. Uh, mm -hmm. Because again, we're talking about medical and, and let's do this and let's do that. But we haven't adopted internal rules as to the decertification process. Right. And we haven't aligned any decertification process with DOA rules and regulations right. with regards to equipment. I'll give you a good example. I'm better, I'm gonna do promotions, customs has done promotions. But what effect did the officer who couldn't pass the PFP have on a promotion? Nothing. Because the two are not aligned. Right? Right? Until such time that we get this commission to align the car and the enabling statute for a post commission. Do we get it to align with the DOA personnel rules and regulations? Because the majority of us are executive by agencies. It's, we're just going to go around in a circle because it's going to be easily contested by an employee uh, who says, well, I didn't get promoted because I failed the PFQP, but I didn't have to pass a PFQP when I applied for promotion. It's not required. Right? And, and I know this by, by uh, example because I was called by an agency who wanted to polygraph employees before promotion. I was like, well, you better go back and check because passing a polygraph is not a requirement for promotion. Yep. And uh, that, that conversation never, uh, never uh, continued because he knew that I was correct. Yep. You, know, you cannot just impose something exactly. that's not written somewhere. Right? So I think we table this because we're just getting like, spin around the circles again. Talk about medical and BFQT and there's a whole whole bunch of things that need to be discussed. Yes. Understand Chief. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just reiterate. Thank you, Chief, for that. Uh, the discussion actually, I understand where Chief's coming from. There's a lot of slew of things. But the focus is on the part where I'm sharing is yeah. on the medical fuel side. Now, as far as the perjury and all that, yes, I agree with Chief. We need to table that in, in this, you know, to, to make sure we get everything in sync. Okay, because each agency has a different virtue of operation. <coughs> each agency has different avenue for their employees, their, their peace officers, mm -hmm. how to operate. Some of us work uh, 12, 12 hours a shift, us 24 hours a shift, some are eight hours a shift, 16 hours. It just is it's, it's flexible. The focus on my end, I'm trying to bring in to help solidify the profile issue that we're having in that department is medical issue, okay? And now uh, I, 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 truly, I truly agree with Chief uh, Ignacio regarding the other, the other involvement of the certified employee. 
it's it's really it's really a sensitive issue. And yes, everything needs to be in mind, and that's where DOA mm -hmm. needs to uh, advise us as the commission to stay within the language of the you know the law itself. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we need to actually and not go in circles. DOA has to put out at least a direction how we're going to head this, how we're going to decertify, when do we decertify? We talked about an extra four months over the year where an employee doesn't pass his PFQT. Uh, that's the extra four months, you know, uh, Major uh, Chong brought that concern. We did agree the extra four months to apply, but at that, there's still many more things and we need to add that to the agenda and I hope Francis, you're observing, um, absorbing all of this. It's really sensitive, but yes, Chief is right. Uh, we need to come up with something uh, because we're just going in circles. Okay, uh, I want to do this out outline. I'll do the outline on the decertification process. Thank well, you. And Chief, Chief uh, Dash is correct. There, there is no uh, decertification. Right. One of the things we have to understand is that the agency itself has to request the decertification. It's not automatic unless there's a crime committed. There is a, uh, it's on the post commission. Yeah, there's, there's a meeting. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's a process, there's the, the, the director should, but what's the process? Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I'll, sir, I'll let it. Do I bring it up at a meeting? Yeah. This open meeting? Do yeah. I just send a random letter to you? I, I will, I'll do a, an outline so that everybody can follow it and then we can approve the process. And then here's the thing also is that there is a provision there that the uh, individual has to be informed of the decertification right. process. Right. And so he has to be a president. Is there, is there a grievance process for the, the, the employee to yeah. well, that's yes, right. there is or a grievance process. Or yes, the yes, yes. contest if he doesn't want if he wants to contest it, right. then that's and there's so there's that process also, right? Right. So I, I will outline it in the court of what the post commission has on. Okay. And I'll send it out. Okay, so in, in line with this, perhaps, I mean, it says uh, to formalize a committee to establish a plan of action for the developer, right? And I know that many, many, oftentimes we find ourselves with situations where we talk about recertification and we don't really pull the trigger on it. Um, my observation is that we should just establish the uh, recertification process committee and then in line with what Chief Bob is talking about and, and marry it to what Chief Ray is talking about, uh, that way we can start moving forward. Because as everyone knows, you can't just start a process without doing your research. Right. I mean, we're, we're, we've done that with the uh, <coughs> board structure. It took a long time to, for us to get to a point where we're actually going to vote on something. And we had to iron out all the details. And so a lot of the concerns like that were brought up just like with Chief Stephen Nash was talking about are, are, are issues that we have to contend with uh, with each agency. And so one of the things is that we want to come up with at least a good foundation and a structure of, of what the process is for the, the due process initially, the uh, process of undergoing the decertification and what your uh, remedy uh, uh, results would be if you go through that, that administrative process. And then of course, obviously we would have to work as line agencies for the executive branch, we would have to work closely with uh, the Department of Administration and quite possibly the civil service. And then the, 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 main, the other entities who are autonomous would have their own servicing HR uh, entities to try and work it. But I'm pretty sure that if we come up with a subcommittee you know, the journey of a thousand steps starts with that first one. And so if we don't ever go down that road and we just keep kicking the can and just say, we need to, we need to, but we don't do it, we're never gonna get there. So I like the idea that everybody is actually brought up. I'm pretty sure we can marry it, but I think that we, it's high time we establish the committee to, to be able to do so and just meet. Because I know everybody has busy schedules, we all do, and we've got a thousand and one things to take care of, including your personal lives. Yeah. But I think this is important, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we have to move forward. There are other things that we have to deal with as, as part of the post commission. Uh, hopefully, we, you know, another quote, how do you eat an elephant, right? So if we can start eating the elephant, we can get through sooner rather than later. Can I, can I uh, touch on the chief? Uh, 
on this uh, sensitive issue, I think the department or agency still has the authority to suspend, to demote, but not decertify a peace officer. Yes. Okay? And, and let's get that clear. The certification is another, okay? But is this the employee is taken upon in violation of the policy of the department? The department has all the rights to take actions to this employee. The only thing that department cannot do to this employee is they certify the employee. But he can suspend whatever whatever actions he violate with the policy of the department. That's totally up to the department on their level. But not to be certified him and put him as a peace officer, puts him over as a you know I don't know PwC uh, uh, engineering as a as, a, as an uh, office aide. He cannot do that, okay? That's just to get clear with this, okay? Actions can be taken from any department in the violation of any peace officer, okay? But not to be certified. That actually, I'm not going to mention, it appeared out in the, uh, uh, there was an issue that was brought up and it was actually presented out and uh, I believe Chief Bob corrected that to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And that's all I, that's all I have. Okay, we, um, so we open the floor to further discussion and um, so there was an idea proffered um, to actually establish a, a, a formalized committee. So I open the floor for any further discussion. Otherwise, uh, if we hear a motion to formalize the committee, we can vote on it. Chief, can I ask, on the committee we're talking about, uh, would it entice if you're on category one or two? Would it would it be okay if they uh, committee from category one can join into a category two committee? I don't I don't think there's any issue uh, because you're you're looking as we move forward as part of the post commission mm -hmm. rules, and if there are any uh, technical issues between categories that can be ironed out when the subcommittee uh, gets to that, right. that juncture. Okay. Yeah. This is only category two, if you look at it, it's only ARF and uh, GFD. Actually, we also have category one. Do we? we have both category one. Yeah. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So. Okay, sir. Okay. Sure. No. Open for... So do we hear a motion? A motion? Yeah. You have a motion? I have a motion that we form a subcommittee or a committee to uh, address uh, the motion to certification for category one and category two peace officers. Okay. So, motion. Second. Second? I second. Okay. So, we so, sir, just as a clarification, uh, when I pull out the rule, then we can identify, maybe take some time to decide who will be in your sub subcommittee. After I. I uh, no, we, yeah, we, well, we, we can. We just, we just voted on the motion to uh, create the committee. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now yes. we just have to create a commission. Okay. How many members? Okay. The committee? In, the, in the committee. Yeah. We yes. can flesh out the details. So uh, okay. all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All opposed. Yeah. Motion, motion, motion carries. Okay. Uh, in line with uh, number one is also number two, which is probably going to be answered when we create a subcommittee. So yes. I'm just going to talk about it uh, very shortly. Uh, medical profiles. I know we, we were discussing it on how to deal with extended medical profiles, and we all have to contend with this. I know that for for self or customs and quarantine, we, we have um, officers. Uh, who have uh, requested for indefinite <coughs> profiles. And of course that impacts not just performance, but also morale. Because when you have officers who show up for a physical fitness test and they're saying, why do I have to go through this? And it's kind of like in reference to what Chief Ignacio was saying, it's like, you know, these guys who did not pass the physical fitness test because they didn't take it are still uh, promoted, right? And some of the things that we can do is either look at sanctions or look at uh, um, incentives. Like, you know, one of the things, of course, is, as we discuss in moving forward, is like instead of maybe decertifying and, and making it negative, perhaps identifying, and of course, it's going to take funding. Anybody who does an excellent will get, you know, a one time stipend of 
a hundred dollars, something like that. This is not something that I'm recommending. I'm just saying turn it into a positive, and then you know it's kind of like, and then work it into your your administrative rules for promotion, and then work with your servicing HR to ensure that when we make announcements for promotion, that these things are are, are met. That you must number one have taken and passed the physical fitness test with at least a satisfactory or something to that effect. Because then what would happen is that other people who, who aren't taking it, we in line with that, we have another program that is has yet to be developed, that was developed through the ARF with their program that would help. The whole intent behind this initiative is not to terminate or get rid of anybody, but to ensure people are living much more longer, extended, healthier lives. We want people to be around. But a lot of times people take it in the negative and they say, you know what, you're targeting me just because I have a, a, a profile. But how long is the profile supposed to be? I mean, do you just put in one profile and, and leave it for the rest of your career? I mean, in all fairness, uh, there are things that you can do, uh, like maybe perhaps create alternative uh, testing components for your policy. So these are the things, of course, in moving forward. So. I don't know if you guys want to discuss item number two, medical profiles, any further. Uh, I open up the floor. I have a question. Sure. Your medical profile, you're referring to medical profile only in relation to the PFQT? Well, normally. Anything, anything that any, prohibits his performance. So when they're performing their yeah. daily uh, yes. response. Yes, and, and so one of the things that, that kind of is tied in with that is the fact that we have an annual physical fitness requirement mandated by law. Yet what uh, a few of our agencies have experienced is that when it comes time for your physical fitness testing, you get like a small group of people who, for whatever reason, come in with uh, either they, they photocopy their initial indefinite waiver and then just turn it in and then it's kind of like you look like you're able to do it and but you just have to do it yes no the reason why i ask is because i like the idea of the, the physician and all that but my understanding correct me if i'm wrong poa but if like for instance you request for a special medical yes uh, yes I understand. the physician that provides the service is not the individual's regular physician so at the time of their physical the person is well, you know, capable of performing the duties. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is, like, um, when we get the notification from them, then the person goes to their regular doctor and gets to know, oh, can't lift 10 pounds, can't do this, can you know, she can own, um, she has to be uh, uh, restricted to deaths. Mm -hmm. But then it kind of conflicts with the doctor's report from the special medical. If, but you've got to get the latest yes, physician's yes. message. And let me just clarify, uh, what we did was we hired an occupational doctor to oversee the uh, art personnel. Mm -hmm. Now Airport Police is on board again uh, with the executive manager seeing the outcome of art. And so... Chief, so, Chief Ray, that's what I was talking about. Yes. That's what I mean about the alignment of the NOA. Yes, yes, and you're right. Because you're right. in the bottom yes. you can go and hire whoever you want. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know. I know. We have to go, have to go through the special medical Right. Yeah. right, and that's why we're leading this to have the assistance of DOA. That, again, it's not aligned. Right, we can yeah. hire something. Yeah. 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 So that's why we have. That's why we we're voicing this the concern, the so that DOA, DOA can guide us to fuse it, because it does work for the autonomous. And believe it does work. And so what's going on, Chief, is that this high position certified. This higher position is certified, even if the employee goes to his regular doctor, this doctor of the airport hire supersedes your private doctor. And, and, yeah, but and, 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 the, the date of the um, evalu um, evaluation, yes. you would have to take the most current physicians. Yes, yes correct. Yeah. that's correct. And something happens. So I think that, that uh, one of the things that was brought up, of course, is that um, like what Chief Ray was mentioning is that, so the, the doctor that it, we say, he says is superseding, is a specialist in the field of occupational uh, 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 health, right? And so some of the doctors that come in, it's like just general practice, and 
So one of the things is that they go through an extensive uh, review of the person. And of course, if the guy says, you know, and, and here's the thing, Vince Paris comes in and I have an in, indefinite waiver. So you need to tell me that now I'm healthy all of a sudden I can, and, and, but then when it comes time for me to show up for my physical fitness testing, all of a sudden now my back hurts again and yeah. I can't do this. So yeah. I mean, these are the things that can be identified. Yeah. But if they go to a doctor with a back problem, a, a doctor has a back that's a specializing in back injuries yes, or a leg injuries, yeah. who's to say that they cannot go to that doctor? Or a doctor that specializes in yeah. neurological injuries or, or things yes. of that nature, yeah. which is beyond the scope of an occupational disease. Yes. Okay. So what's happening there, Chi? If he actually does a specialist, okay, this occupational doctor will agree with the specialist. And that's what the we're trying to say is we got guys yeah. that were coming in with 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 uh, conditional yes, but guess what? The weekend warriors reserves. And as they want to get it, I mean, uh, seriously, baby, let me, because I, I work for staff inspection and IA and working for the chief's office. We cannot have them tell, they don't have to tell us that they have leg injury unless it's, you can see if it's obvious. Mm -hmm. They don't have to tell us the, the extent or the, because it's HEPA. Yeah. Right. There's yes, no, yes, yes. We cannot delve it's into their mental deep into that. Mm -hmm. So it's like a gray area. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why we shoot them over to DOA. Right. Mm -hmm. And DOA say, we, They'll have their doctor substantiate that. Yes. Yes. And that's that's where they will say, okay, we're going to send you to an occupational physician. That's not our call. No, no, no that's not. See, you're 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 speaking at the level like Chief is saying at the level of DOA. So you need this this whole thing has to channel to DOA. Yes, so that's why we're that's why yeah. I'm referring from the autonomous. Yeah. How it's working to coincide with DOA. So oh, that we can work together. That's, yeah. that, that's I'm like, I'll come up again and then I say what they do this. Yes. And they call those that come back with the military service connected. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you? Okay, sir. I, I, I'll kind of try to see if I can close this. Yeah, let's uh, close this discussion. 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 But here, here's, I'm going to just give you the, the thing. Title 17, uh, 27, right? Chapter uh, 3, uh, subsection 306. Uh, and I'll just kind of give the highlights in it. Okay, it says here, it says here, um, the profession, uh, chapter uh, 27, chapter 3, GCA, uh, Post Commission Administrative Rules, 31, uh, 3006, subsection. So essentially this, right, it says here, okay, that the, com uh, the commission must obtain and maintain, with emphasis, okay, the, uh, the, the standards, okay, so in other words, must obtain and maintain the condition of employment as a condition of uh, continued service mm -hmm. in any peace officer position. So in other words, it's not just <coughs> when you come in, you're certified for the right. rest of the thing. You must maintain it. And this applies also to be free of any physical and emotional conditions. This is on the uh, 51, 104. Okay, and this should be evaluated by a licensed uh, uh, someone who practices medicine or a psychologist or psychiatrist. Okay. So, in other words, and I, when I do this uh, summary for everyone to review, I'm going to add this these particular uh, uh, statutes so you can everybody. I mean, I'll, I'll do a um, a flow chart so that everybody can understand, and it will be easier for you to follow. But essentially is this, and this is the, uh, uh, also applies sir, to those who are, are in the military service. And, and you know, a lot of times, like, we have issues where people say, I have PTSD, okay? And so they can't come in. So how does that affect, you know, if it affects your job performance, you know, we have a form that says all these different things. Can you drive? Can you supervise inmates? Can you handcuff? Can you use a baton? Can you uh, use a uh, use of force? Uh, can you drive? Can you uh, uh, you know uh, whatever climb uh, ladders or whatever? It has a whole bunch of things. So it's very specific. It doesn't ask, do you have a heart heart problem? Do you have a liver problem? It's very specific to the job performance. So using that, using that, and using what we have here, this will help you determine what what to do. And so when we find, when you find 
in accordance that this guy can't perform certain things, okay, uh, then you, that's where you can go through that DOA process of uh, what do you call that, that reclassification. First, the, the rules are you have to try to uh, give the reasonable accommodations. The, the next level, of course, would be to find another agency to take him. Let's say it's a uh, you know whatever uh, a position that from uh, DOC, uh, 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 police, maybe to conservation or whatever. If there, if that's available, if we can fit in their uh, their criteria, then the other part is uh, what's that? Uh, reclassification, okay. And then the last one is termination, if you can fulfill those things. So it's very specific, and that's what I've been using uh, for our, our our officers, and we've I've done it at the, the airport also. So following those specific measures, you should be able to handle it. Uh, and we, we across the board in all agencies, it's, it's a similar thing, whether it be uh, health issues, heart problems, PTSD, and all these other things that affect that they can't do certain things. So even like, I can only work from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And you know, there you have like certain things, right? But the it, it will all up, be up to the agency to determine whether that is satisfactory or not. So like, let's say it's 8 p.m. and uh, at 12 p.m. there's an emer uh, emergency operations and we need all personnel on that site. Does that individual cannot be called because it's 8 a.m.? So you use those kind of you know, uh, scenarios to determine whether or not to reclassify, to uh, uh, terminate, or to uh, transfer to another agency. So I will have those things and give those options and some scenarios to, to help you understand where we can go. But yeah, it is a thing, but I've been using it for my agency and it seems to be working so far. So, uh, uh, but yeah, if you have any other further questions, I think we can do that. But again, maybe, there's two parts of this thing that is very important. One, you must uh, obtain and maintain this physical and mental performance, okay? And the other part is that must be free of any physical, emotional, or mental condition. So PTSD is one of them, right? So. Again, I'm not saying that they, sh uh, you know, because some pe people with PTSD are, are functioning. They have, they sometimes do have some difficulties, but they are functioning even though they're, they're, they're at the, and they're not obligated to tell you they have PTSD. That's a, that's a, that's a, uh, under the ship, USERA. So that's the issue uh, that we have, right? And that's a challenge. But if you stick to the, if you do you say job, uh, do you some responsibilities? You should be okay. You should be all right. Okay. <laughs> very good. Very good. Okay, that's about it. That's all right. well, the thing is, we just don't want these guys that are, we're not trying to be biased on anything. We yeah. want to help them, but please, we don't want them to be subject matter expert while these guys are on profile. That's really not not right. Here's the thing, you know. Everybody has to understand this one very important thing. Mm -hmm. Other agencies, I mean, uh, if a person can't perform his duty, somebody's taking out the slack. Yep. Someone is doing the job for them. Well, if you make them do only uh, dispatch and they're getting paid hazardous pay and all these other things, then, you know, we have to look at those things. And you know, let's say the guy's pulling 16 hours of work while this guy's only doing eight hours, something's wrong. Yep. And it's just, you know, that's where the wrong issue comes along, yeah. right? So you have to be strong and, and uh, make those hard decisions. Yeah. That's it, sir. We're good. Okay. Sir, I, I'm so sorry, but I have a, um, if I can, I, I have a meeting with the, the court, so I need to leave. But I want to add, also add one before I go. Recently, uh, I had a meeting with the uh, governor and lieutenant governor regarding how can we expedite the hiring of, uh, you know, our, our, our recruits. And I know that that has been very difficult with DOA. We have they have limited uh, resources and everything. I I gave them a, a a proposal of how each agency can help DOA uh, with with that process. And some of those processes, like we do the PT, we do the physical fitness uh, examination, 
rather than they do it. Uh, we take care of the background check, uh, you know, the, the interviews. And those for those that agencies that have to have a test, we can help with the proctor, uh, being proctors. And, you know, I ask that maybe DOA can have monthly uh, schedules of when they're going to have these tests, and we will help administer it. Uh, and the whole thing is this, right? If, if uh, whatever the, the holdup might be because of the you know, lack of uh, resources at the DOA personnel, you know, we can help expedite that process. So DOA can do the you know, driver's license, the high school uh, verification, the US citizenship, the birth certificate, um, what else, uh, the, the clearances of the court. So essentially, they're just receiving that document, do the checklist that they did this, and we take over on the other side of the house. So we will do our PFQT according to each agency, and then we'll, we'll uh, you know, we verify. And they can have a representative they want. But my whole thing is this: we should try to take off, take off some of the responsibilities from their shoulders if we want to get those recruits. Like right now, you know, uh, we had since uh, May of last year, you know, we had a, a list of. Uh, People apply, but it's been very difficult for them to get through that process. They have their own, uh, you know, issues re regarding it. So, what can we do to do? It? And what I would like to do is send send you th those documents of my proposal to to uh, to review and, and get, get your input. But essentially, I was trying to make sure that you know, once an application in it is in, maybe 90 days. Within 90 days, we should get that person review. Okay, if it's not happening within 90 days, something is wrong, you know? Some, either we send one of our uh, personnel to help with the processing at DOA, or we take off some of that responsibility from their children. Now this is a proposal and it hasn't been approved yet, but I wanted to send it to you guys uh, uh, because then, you know, you can provide your input. I'm sure we're gonna have to have a discussion when we have our uh, monthly meetings. Or Chief, I want to see a uh, one-party yeah. firm's been doing that. Yeah, we've been helping them. Okay, that's not the delay on our end. The delay is the actual hiring part. Okay, is the money transaction. Okay, so the funding yeah. part is the yeah. Problem. The money is of course the issue, but, but as for the application process, okay, uh, how, how long does it take? Just for them to get the final score and all that. Yes, yeah. well below we ninety days. Uh, okay. And we've, been, we've been helping them, and by the way, we get like over close to 2,000 applicants. Yeah, that, well, that's, yeah. The, that's the whole... That but it goes down to like yeah, but see, less than 200 when you're going to go to the... Right, team. Chief. But I think at uh, the way, maybe you have one or two people that are assigned to your particular thing, right? Well, we just... Uh, whatever they ask us to help them with, yeah. help them out. Well, yeah. okay. <laughs> Something's wrong. Okay. Uh, they must have been right. on this we're still waiting. Uh, okay, that's not all I need to. Okay, <laughs> so, so the same thing. Uh, you know, Chief, you, you got your issues too, right? So I, I, I'm not trying to. Not a lot of issues. Uh, <laughs> but well, there's the thing. What can we do? I mean, it's enough already. We, we we know that there's urgency, sense of urgency. I want to just see what can we do to expedite like that process and help DOA. Not to say they're doing something, but because they got their own stuff. That yeah. to deal with, too. Yeah. and they got multiple things, uh, yeah. research, and I mean, even look at that twenty-two percent. That takes a lot of time to get people to figure out you know, what the, you know, how to increase and do the research and everything like that. So, but in the meantime, if if, if it isn't about money, if it's about the process, what can we do to expedite that process, yeah. right? So that that's one less thing on, on their shoulder. It's, it's usually the certification of funds. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Usually. So I don't know if we want to have BBMR involved in this conversation okay. as well. Well, it that's takes a while because okay. we send a full package down to GG1 and everything. Okay. Well. So, uh, okay, so this is what I, this is the thing. Even, okay, let's say there's not enough funds, but can we still process the individual? Let's say, okay, uh, we, we interview them and then we select 10. When the funding comes, then okay. There, here's the thing. Why do we have to wait to the funding when we can still get a, a list of people? Let's say we but, have but this, uh, the, the GG one that goes down to BBMR is the completed package. They've been hired, yeah. and we're just waiting for them to certify the funds right. so we can and send it down the, to the The GG one is not meaning you have. It means you, the, you can. We have the name assigned and everything. 
and this is the energy. This yeah, the personality. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. that's that's your particular. So how long did it take you to get that? Let's um. Let's say uh, the thing expired uh, closed in October. We haven't done so the time. Yet. The time that you turned in the the we email would take the, about maybe two to three weeks. And then when we went through the DOA process, how long did it take? A lot, a while, right? A while. So that's what I'm trying to say. That's that's my whole that's thing. Some, no, yeah. you're right, and that's what we do. Yeah. We help with the clearances. We obtain our clearances for our our, our applicants when okay. they're ready. Okay. We call, we uh, they, we request for it. They go down and pay for it. Bring it back. Yeah. We process and we try to do as much as we can. That's what we I mean. get a list from DOA, our contact at DOA. They tell us, can you help us get this, this, and this? Okay. But we do it. But, okay. So uh, yeah. do you do the PT? Do you do the physical fitness test? We not. We are not apply that to No, the new applicants. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Not until after. See, that, that's what I'm saying. So they provide, again, they provide a physical update and then the yes. people are taking it, but we don't test them. My whole thing is this, right? Whatever it is, to, even if it's yeah, just one or two items, items, items to expedite that process and to help DOA in, in whatever form, yeah. we all know about the, the functions of uh, availability of uh, funds. But my thing is that shouldn't stop us from yeah. already yeah, going right. through that right. process yeah. and say, okay, once we get, you know, and then we just keep p picking from already the ones that we already interviewed. That's my whole thing, right? No, no, I agree. Yeah. It's just that you know we always have to contend the fact that yeah. there's 30 other yeah. agencies we gotta. That's exactly why. Yeah. That's what I mean. They got like 2,000 people applying. GP about 800. We get 80. But that list is only good for one year. I know. Yeah. So, so maybe not. That's the thing. Should we make it two years? Yeah. That's where Francis comes in. Yeah, that's right. where, I mean, so that's a discussion that we can we can ask. I think uh, one of the things you might, we might want to consider when we do the subcommittees yeah. is other than clarifying our role and our duties and maybe some recommendations on legislation that amends the current personnel rules to make it a little bit more you know, flexible for defense, law enforcement, let's say. Right. You know, because it's trying to get a law enforcement hired at the same time as a, getting a yes. PC Right. You know, we should. Maybe that is also to be Okay, I thought you were going to. Can we do this before you come? Yeah. Just out of general, sir. Are we going to delay it? Are we going to delay it for two years? Yeah. You know, what's going to happen is those guys on that same roster, they're already going to find other places of employment. And that's what we're going to get at the bottom of the ground. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Which is okay, so so going back, uh, we're gonna we're gonna kind of like uh, switch over to new business because Chief Bob needs to leave, and I want to make sure we capture his vote uh, at least on the uh, item business. number two under section Roman numeral uh, six under new business, the yes. general force leadership okay. structure here. And we've been meeting. Uh, I think we met three previous times. The last time was mm -hmm. in January. Uh, we we went from 56 pages of the law enforcement force structure down to I think it's like 28, 30 something. So uh, I don't want to drag the can out any longer or kick it. I want to vote on it so that we can develop a way of moving forward and uh, developing a clear and concise path to get to where we need to be. So uh, we are going to go to item number two. On the general force leadership structure tier, final draft discussion, and vote for approval. So I open the floor for any further discussion on the uh, law enforcement officer force structure tier before we go into formally voting. And as a reminder, only those agencies with uh, voting authority, and I went over it earlier uh, today, and I will go over it one more time just in case. Uh, uh, we need to, but I'm opening it up real quick because uh, Chief Bob is. Uh, yeah. I think the so check for it. Okay, sir. I just to let you know, I'm still supporting very discussed with my my So that's not your fault. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Um, Francis. So um, basically, just just wanted uh, I guess uh, ask and have to clarify so that uh, we all know what we're reporting for, right? Is, is the intent um, to, I guess, create um, the law enforcement officer one, two, three, and so forth, all the way up to 15, and then basically have the current 
officers, let's say a, a police officer to uh, the Moldova started in to, let's say, a where are the days to they are appropriate for the level yeah. of education, training, yes. experience, and knowledge. Yes. yes, so is that is that the intent? Yes. Okay, so uh, if there are no further discussion, I'll go over the uh, voting and not voting, or actually, I just uh, mention who's voting. The Guam Police Department, Guam Airport Police, the Guam Port Police, Guam Attorney General, Guam Customs, Guam Department of Corrections, and we have this vote already listed in support. Uh, Division of Aquatic and Wildlife Resources, Department of Agriculture, um, the Unified Courts of Guam, the Marshals, the Guam Fire Department, uh, Unified Courts of Guam under probation, the Guam Department of Administration, is a board member, Department of Youth Affairs, the Guam International Airport Authority, Aircraft Rescue Firefighting. And uh, the non voting is Park Patrol, Guam Community College, University of Guam. Question Have we received a comprehensive review and feedback from DOA personnel? Human resources. They have been sitting with us. No, but I see it. Even notice how they're going to fold this into the. That's going team. to be developed in moving forward. We did meet with DOA way in, in when we proffered this, and so we I did have a, a meeting with uh, Shane and Francis. So they, they understand how the concept is going to fold yes. into the law enforcement. Behavior. And they gave me their inputs and their thoughts on on uh, the way forward. And it's not a simple matter of just implementing it today and it gets implemented, it so gets put out So that's actually, uh, Chief, is what were their thoughts and what were their input? So, so some of the things, of course, is that uh, the concern, some of the concerns, one of the concerns was you can't take small organizations and, and say you're going to put them in at LEO 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 90, much of a part of what? These are meant for like entities with, with a massive amount of jurisdiction and responsibility. Yeah. So entities like the police department obviously would have like a GS-15, I mean a LEO-15 all the way down to an LEO-1. Okay. In areas like, uh, um, let's say conservation, their units are small. I think the most you would have is probably up to LEO 10 or 11. Okay. So these are the things that obviously have to be uh, uh, developed, which is why uh, the other day I, I also sent an email to uh, Mr. Plisco to identify what are the things that we need to do in moving forward to try and develop this. Is this the, uh, the, the, the answer where we just implement it today and it, and it works tomorrow? No, obviously there has to be some well thought of um, uh, energy and strategic motion in trying to implement this. It won't be implemented at any time soon, but <clears throat> going back to the mandate that was given to us a little over a year ago was to develop a, a law enforcement officer force structure uh, tier. This is the tier. Now, the way we get to cross the gap is we need to start getting the first the foundation. This is only the foundation. It does not just get implemented, I'm just reiterating, because there, there won't be, uh, it's not gonna be just cut and paste. It's, there are certain things that every agency is gonna to have to identify and establish and to make sure that in line with the, the force structure, and maybe it won't fit. So these are the things that, of course, as we move forward, but in line with some kind of structure, at least there's gonna be more standardization and it'll help the post commission in reaching the intent of the commission. So I, I uh, hope that answers the... Uh, so is this available on the post commission website where people can download it and look at it? We can make it available, right? I mean, the, the challenge we see is, is, of course, when we leave here, I go back to my job, you go back to your job, um, Ms. Bertha goes back to what she does, but I'm pretty sure we can try and find somebody within GCC to be able to, to publish this. But we did make it available time and time and time again uh, to all the members through email. And then also every time I have a subcommittee meeting, uh, it's been put up and then the latest draft is there. So um, I just want to make sure that, uh, and we did do our own internal briefings, uh, at least with our, our own respective uh, stakeholders. So. Um, 
I mean, we even put out notices that we're having the uh, subcommittee meetings, but we have people I from the team. Yeah. And substantial addition probably yes. should be available to yes. the general public. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you want to wish? Because I, I know it, we're not talking about pay raises this year or anything. No. This is just but a tier. Again, you know, the, to align the assumption that, you know, I think pay raises are kind of a sticky issue right now. Yeah, so, man, the other thing, and part of that mandate was for us to develop a study to uh, look at it, but the post commission is, is ill-equipped to, to move forward, but at least this goes some to some extent towards standardizing and, and creating a, a foundation for uh, core competencies from the beginning of your career all the way towards the middle of your career, towards the end, and it even takes into consideration specialties. So, uh, like just to reiterate, we're, we're using concepts learned from the military and the federal government as far as uh, how this was developed. It wasn't just created in a vacuum. So, uh, compared to what we have currently, this should help. Okay. Will this, at some point, um, affect or establish a pay scale? Could it? It could, but that's, that remains to be seen. I, I can't tell you yes or no, but it, it just stands to reason that if... if just depending on where they're... Yeah, I mean, you might move over and find out that you're paying... Well, honestly, I think it will because if we're, we're going to adopt it. That's just talking about how is this going to line up with yeah. the, the LEO pay yes. plan. Exactly. Right, so because we're, we're one of those... The LEO has its own separate pay plan from the general pay plan. So how is this going to fold into the general pay plan? Because you know the the, the general pay plan has the, the TSA that obviously goes yes. It's, it's, and so all these things uh, that we're talking about page, right? Right, right now at this juncture is is stuff that needs yeah. to be developed, like PDQs. Yeah. We can't just say, okay, uh, Francis, we're going to do this and implement it. It's like I need to know what it is from DOA and civil service. What is it that each agency needs to to provide as far as like uh, the creation. Or, or alignment to the force structure. So these are the things that, um, and we're, we're kind of so far away from that right now. I mean, the, the, the first point is to just adopt the, uh, the LEO force structure tier, and then in moving forward, we can develop the rules and regulations and, and uh, the, the energy to create the synergy to, to actually get us from point A to point B. This could also help department administration's HR sections when it's time for them to like evaluate an employee and say, this is where this person actually is sitting, especially when they're applying for a promotion or a position. So stuff like this is really helpful for us and also for administrative folks that are in the human uh, resources field. Okay. The impact is not going to be negative. It's going to be a positive impact for the departments. OK, so uh, is there any further discussion? Otherwise, uh, we're going to move on with the, the voting. And I think it's important that we probably just go down the line with all the voting members. Uh, and I'll start uh, first with the uh, Guam Police Department, whether or not you are in favor or not in favor. Uh, in favor. In favor of the Guam Police. Guam Airport Police, once again, not here. Guam Port Police, not here. The Guam Attorney General's Office. Guam Customs in favor. Guam Department of Corrections. Uh, he said he was in favor. And that's uh, Chief Robert Camacho. Chief, sorry. So yes. We a motion to approve, accept and approve? Or right. are we just voting? We're, well, we've been discussing this for like months and we said that it was going to be voted on in the next post commission okay. meeting. So, okay. uh, Division of Aquatic Wildlife Resources, Guam Department of Agriculture. In favor. University of Guam, Guam Community College, Unified Courts of Guam, Marshall, uh, Guam Fire Department. In favor. Uh, Unified Courts of Guam Probation, Guam Department of Administration, Personal Services Division. In favor. Department of Youth Affairs. In favor. GIA Aircraft Rescue Firefighting ARF voting member. In favor. 
And I know that we have uh, the park patrol, but so, I mean, what would you have done? In favor. Okay, so uh, we have out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven voting so far. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of eleven. So the motion passes. So now moving forward, we will be working closely with all the agency heads as well as uh, um, our servicing HR, which is the Department of Administration, in uh, trying to uh, further develop this. And uh, in moving forward, once we identify the way forward, this will be packaged uh, and presented to the legislature to uh, put into a mandate. So before we get to that point, we want to make sure that everybody is considered and that we move forward uh, in accordance with law and regulations. Okay. These are always subject to amendment, right? It, it can be, but recall that we've already done three iterations, but if there's anything that's outside of what we've already discussed, then obviously yes. I bring it up because the one police department under chapter 77 title 10 uh, for the police commander, the major, the captain, the lieutenant, uh, they have codified in law what the educational requirements are. Yes. Yeah. So again, this this thing is not in line with. Well, so said, when when we do we amend chapter seventy seven or do we amend this? So in line with with uh, the requirements out, outlined with the Guam Police Department's Enabling Act, uh, what we what I did was as part of the committee we took the Guam Police Department uh, positions and we we stratified it in line with that. And we noticed that within the career progression that there were certain elements or positions that needed to be incorporated, but we did, we did take into consideration the education requirements, but we, we took everything out yeah. because upon the recommendation at a one meeting, so it's a little bit more generic. So, right. but it just says like a master's degree, right? What? In, in the name of for the police commander, it's either a master's or a bachelor's. Yeah. Yeah. So we can we can work, uh, and that those are the things that can be developed through the rules. Right. Okay. But I digress. Uh, I was reminded by Ms. Bertha that uh, we do have to put it up for a motion and a second. I know it's putting the heart the cart before the wheel, but so I guess I'm trying to figure out. Okay, okay. Do we amend this or do we amend that? Do I amend a rule, right? A, a, a legal force structure, a rule that we, we promulgated, or do we amend the law? Right, because this one says officers must have a complete, must have completed a master's degree or higher. For so the, what page are you on? The very last one, twenty. The last for the colonel, right? What twenty? The Indian statute is either a bachelor's or a master's. Same thing for the police chief. Is it a bachelor's or a master's? If you have a bachelor's, you have to have X amount of years. If you have a master's, you have to have X amount of years. <clears throat> so may, may I ask them? Our, it's our understanding that this is basically, although it's here, right? This is like basically a guide. You know, when yeah, you start getting right. into it, uh, chief, right? It may, it may be so modified. So why don't we we yeah. do this? We we allow for um, uh, the commission to uh, make changes as necessary as we move forward. Right. But before we do that, I, I think we need to just put a motion to vote on it, just to formalize it. Even though we said we were going to vote on it today. Just to uh, yeah. make sure there's no technical issues to make sure we capture what we're doing. Instead of deleting the whole sentence or deleting the line, okay, it's just straight through. That okay, okay. know what we're taking out and replacing yeah. it. Okay, because yeah. I think that we motion to accept it and all that, and then as we, I'm assuming as we move along by departments and all that, okay. we start making changes accordingly, right? Yeah, I mean we had our, our, our pre subcommittee, but what we can do is like if the motion can be made so that. Um, if there are any, uh, um, if there's a need for us to make any uh, uh, change, that the commission is, is authorized to do so before we, we present it to the legislature. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's a living document. And yes. It's, it's, it's okay. So I just need the motion, and then uh, okay. So motion to approve. 
the government of Guam, law enforcement organization, officer, general, or leadership structure here. And to make amendments as and necessary. And to make amendments as necessary. Okay. I hear a motion from the fire department. Do I hear a second? Second. GPD, all in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Okay, the motion carries. I know we got the vote. So, uh, like I said, going back to the vote, is the vote is 8 to 11. Uh, as we move forward, um, if you see anything other, anything that's glaring over we'll yours, we'll go ahead, like the chief uh, from the police department mentioned, it's a living document. Maybe what we can do is I'll, I'll have it placed on uh, Excel spreadsheet, share drive. But you don't want to change the, uh, the inherent foundation. There are certain things, of course, that could be struck out because when you strike it out, that's, it won't really have too much of an impact. But uh, we just want to make sure and move forward that uh, everybody is aware and that uh, we'll, we'll get to a point uh, where we are going to have it mandated and everybody is uh, considered it as part of the process. Yes, you don't can do continuity, Chief. Uh, you can strike up or actually put an addition to right. the tier structure yes, yes, for discussion. As okay. As necessary. Um, I know that we digress, so now we're going back to uh, the old business. If there's no further discussion, okay. So uh, old business, the park patrol training program, uh, and the, so I know that we were, we were discussing yeah, yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah, right. I just need to know where we're at, how far. I'm not even sure if you're still part of the development. I did send. Uh, I did send a guideline as requested by right. your director. Right. And are you guys actually in ties in? So I believe, um, from my understanding, is our department reached out to the post commission um, for the purpose of, uh, I guess, approving right a training program, yes. right? Um, but it was for the purpose of um, expediting uh, the promotion process for the new recruits that we had taken on uh, back in, I believe, uh, July and August of uh, last year. Yes. 2022. So, anyways, um, we reached out with uh, to to DOE uh, uh, training and recruitment section, I believe uh, Ms. Angela Cadiz, and uh, so we were asking as well, uh, what would be the minimal training requirements from DOE uh, prior to them being promoted, and right? what would DOE require for us for for um, for them to be able to to get into those positions, the officer ones from those ones. So uh, we did send DOA a uh, 560 hour training certificate which we developed uh, as we were training the recruits you know uh, basically uh, in real time and so um, we were fortunate in that a lot of the um, training availability lined up real well so you know that's why it's 560 hours which kind of equates to like three months right, of training, right? Mm -hmm. But um, we can expand that further, uh, you know, given uh, maybe what we can incorporate OJT time, you know, shadowing time, whatnot, six hours to satisfy whatever uh, the post commission would require from us. But, you know, like I said, the initial intent of it was to expedite uh, the recruitment. Bring them work Yeah, 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 the yes. promotional process. To, to okay. get them into officer once, you know, because right now, um, Park patrols personnel um, uh, status right now is critical. You guys know. I mean, you uh, you see us out there. It's mostly just me and Officer Mesa, right? Almost every assignment, every uh, you know, every activity, whatnot. I mean, you know, pretty much the island knows us by face and name because we're at everything, right? And we're even struggling to show up to these uh, commission meetings. So yeah, we'll have something more solid, I guess, for you guys in the next uh, meeting. But it will incorporate this 560 hour certificate, which was approved by DOE. Okay. That's good to hear. Um, good to hear, congratulations for that. Thank you. If there's anything that we can do to help you, I mean, we offered to, we gave you like our training syllabus for, you know, like what no, no. you went through when yeah. you went through your initial training. Sure. With customs. Yeah. Uh, and so these are the things that uh, in moving forward, we want to make sure that, you know, it's not just you, it's like in line with uh, the, the intention for the post commission is to create a baseline foundation and then move right. forward. So everything we're doing is trying to standardize things. Okay. So eventually we'll get there. But if there's anything we can do, just reach out. 
Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Uh, number four, subjected Federal Aviation Administration uh, FAR Part 139 mandated regulations for our personnel to upkeep certification annually. Discussion uh, by Mr. Martin, Vice Chair. Yeah, sir, I'll just strike on that. On the uh, ARF, uh, it's actually a requirement uh, to undergo. And uh, like I said, if we can have this established with the assistance of the OA on an annual basis where we can have our law enforcement guys can come up with a plan of training that, you know, like us, uh, what we did was if we established uh, 12 matrices that requires them to perform their diligent responsibility. And this is, this is annually for them to perform, but it's a monthly training requirement that they have to be submitting and they actually have to be signing the training sheets as they perform. And in this way, uh, it purely, it will be uh, the competency of the, the fire personnel's performance is there uh, daily and monthly uh, being monitored. Uh, by their skills and, like I said, their physical performance. And this is what this actually is in place for. It's a monitored type of uh, a training regimen that we infuse. And I would like to share that with the commission that it actually keeps us aligned with, uh, you know, us at the brass to make sure that all our personnel is actually, uh, instead of not not performing, at least we have a, a guideline that we can have these guys being shadowed by other peers to make sure that they can comply with all the training required. And that was this program was all about. And instead of it being under Part 139 and the uh, DOB requirement, uh, we adopted it as an SOP with the airport art. And that concludes my, uh, you know, if anything, you guys uh, can come up with your standard training. It's almost like the PFQT, but this is not the physicality of the training. It's actually the mentality of the training skill, where they are supposed to perform uh, while they are in question in the classroom. Upon completing the classroom, then they perform it out physical uh, two hours to be exact, if it needs to be, or four hours to complete it. So that meets federal way last year. Yes. Does it exceed or just meet? Exceeds or meets? Exceed or meets? Uh, uh, you, does it meet or exceed the federal guidelines? It meets. Okay. It meets. I think you said that we just adopted it. And yeah, we adopted it cheap from so there, yes. and we just brought it in as a desperate right. standard operating procedure for our guys. Great job. <clears throat> yes. It really, it really, it really helps, guys. Uh, honestly, every training. Uh, you know, uh, it gives purity to our firefighters and also keeps them in line. You know, 24 seven is a long, a long process of work. But these guys, they train day and night. We do have scheduled trainings that I pour a drill at two in the morning where everybody's asleep. I go in and pour a drill and these guys now will be up. You know, you get them where actually they're all set. You know, you cannot get a proficient outcome on a training. If you actually size up for the training and size it up before you act it, you want to hit this where unexpectedly, like maybe Chief Ignacio goes to the station and just pulls, pulls, a, pulls a drill on his people and just to see the alertness. And that's what this is all about. The training is actually. I don't know if I should be going to the <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> They're out here working already. You know what I mean? At the station? They might be out on the street. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's all these guys is all about. Uh, yeah, I think every issue, every issue every is every different. Yeah. This is where the, the next topic comes in about the police one stuff. Yes. Because police one are very cheap to annual training requirements. Yep. We need to do like, we have our own annual training requirements for each one of the Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Understood. Okay, any uh, further discussion on this on the floor? Any discussions? Uh, now we move on to the Guam Post Commission regulations, the uh, peace officer certification of departments and uh, dealing with operational requirements. Uh, my suggestion 
is that in line with uh, the item number one and item number two, we, we table it only because we're looking at developing a subcommittee anyway. And these are these are some of the things that should that would be relevant to the uh, subcommission, uh, the sub subcommittee meetings to be able to develop. I don't want to just have so we just go over it and then the word one and done because uh, um, we we really need to do a better uh, a good job of uh, digging through the weeds and uh, formalizing uh, regulations in line with your agency's missions and the uh, operating requirements. So. Um, are we okay with that? The only comment that I would like to make for the fire department side is on Guam Fire Department is we have what we call the Pro Board Certification Program, which is part of the National Fire Protection Association standards. Yes. So they have NFPA 1021, NFPA 1000, 472, 1072, and all of these basically it talks about the different uh, levels of uh, fire service. And not only did we adopt it, it's in also incorporated into our promotional requirements, which is down at the department administration. So we took it that step further. And what it actually did was it eliminated the testing process. So you don't have to test anymore for like fire captain, battalion chief, uh, assistant fire chief, or deputy fire chief. If you have those certifications, while doing that, you were taking nationally certified tests to get that certification. So that's one of the advantages of that adopting these federal standards. Yes. Now, the question I ask you, Chief, is are you going to incorporate that into your promotional requirements? So, yes. And, and that will ensure that each individual is meeting those requirements. Now, as for other requirements that other regulatory or commissions develop, such as the post, in terms of the physical fitness, like Chief Ignacio brought up, some people are still getting promoted without having any proof that they, they are, are passing the physical fitness requirements or medical requirement, so on and so forth. But I just wanted to say that, uh, just bring that up that these national standards or whatever standard, once it's incorporated into the promotional process, and that's where every individual, when it affects money, when it affects their livelihood, no kidding, they will make some. They'll comply. Yeah, they'll comply or make that attempt to comply. Don't get me wrong, there are some folks that don't care about promotion. Yeah, but they don't care about certification. So they're happy at Firefighter 1 for the rest of their career. But what do we want to move up in our ranks? Yeah. We want We're quality, yeah. continuous yeah. professional development, quality improvement. That's what we want to provide a better service to our community. Yes. Yep. It's it's quality. Quality. Yes, Thank sir. you for that comment. I, 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 I really appreciate that. And maybe one of the things in moving forward is that we we look towards incorporating some yes. of these uh, best practices into right. yeah. current practices so that we can get better. And by the way, this is not something that Guam Fire Department thought up on their own. Other fire departments throughout the nation, they use this system. Not all, but some do. Yeah, yeah. But yes, and moving forward, these are the things that we can uh, uh, talk about in trying to cross the gap. Thank you. Any okay. further discussion? Okay, uh, now um, we're going to new business number Item number one, the Guam Post Executive Director position uh, recommendation and appointment. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, we, we recently or we received a, a nomination letter uh, from the Office of the Governor that uh, appointed Mr. Uh, recommends Mr. John Zama uh, for the position of the Executive Director. And, uh, is that general? Uh, no. No, I'm going to go over yeah. his uh, part of the his uh, work history. In the court. No. Yeah. <clears throat> so he is uh, got Guam retired um, in January 2020. He was part of the U.S. Army Reserves, retired in January 2015. He's a member of the Guam Parole Board uh, presently. Uh, he was administrator of the courts, a judiciary of Guam. He was chief probation officer for Superior Court of Guam. He was deputy chief. Uh, he was probation officer, supervisor, probation officer, and then he has a bachelor of science degree in criminal justice. He has a certificate of basic law enforcement, uh, criminal justice. He is a lieutenant, a retired lieutenant colonel, uh, 
Thank you. He is retired in January 2015 and uh, becomes highly recommended from the office of the governor. So we just wanted to open up the floor for discussion and then uh, if, if anything um, we can also uh, do we just talked about the recommendation and uh, the, the, the appointment. So I open the floor uh, for any discussion, debate. How long is the term for? Is it a, every four years here? Or is it like, uh, until such time we remove The last board? time we had an executive director was Mr. Santa Tomas, and uh, he kind of left us so I, I, I'm not too sure I have to look at the, uh, the law itself and find out how long, the, the length of it. Or does he serve at the pleasure of the commission? He has to be voted into the commission, so I believe he has to be serves at the pleasure, but let me go back to the, the regulation and take a look at it. But in order for, for us to be able to pick anybody up, the commission has to vote, you know, I mean, 50% um, uh, plus one to, to, to the, the recommendation is from the governor's uh, and so the commission knows to vote upon the appointment of well we open the floor for a support yeah. discussion or if there's any other person that might be nominated um we open the floor uh, Jay? Uh, let me decide uh, salary uh are we getting a contract how did they handle Mr. Shantanu the last was it a contractual uh, agreement? Was it they like, they had a salary a, a salary, salary of about seventy a little over seventy thousand yes. seventy seventy five thousand that was put into the budget. So when you subtract that that fits all this other stuff, it comes out to like maybe fifty thousand per annum. But you know these are the things that uh, are are not within our our. Uh, Okay, but well, should, so, uh, so, so I'm asking, I mean, I, I, I vote for John and John. I, I know John personally, and I think he'd be a great executive director of the job, but how are we entering into this agreement? Are we doing it as post commission? Is it going to again be under the college? If it's under post commission, are we drafting a in contract? The, so these are the things that, uh, of course, we have to iron out. However, in previous appointments, uh, it was, I'm not sure how. But like with um, the previous executive director, they were working, he was working for the community college. Yeah, uh, because the money was was, was uh, uh, allocated to the community college, which is and, and, and that's the, that's also what happened with with this particular case. The only thing is now is that uh, I'm not sure if there's any budget, but we're working closely with the lieutenant governor's office to number one uh, work on the salary and also create the organization. Have, have we asked? Uh, from community college, so there was an allotted budget for the post commission. Yeah, so in in uh, talking with uh, this person, so we we don't we don't have it only because we were already sitting with the lieutenant governor's office, and that the lieutenant governor is, is working on on uh, uh, ensuring that we have enough funding. Number one, to get the executive director on board, and then the other one is to provide additional funding for a couple other positions that would be support staff. Yes. And also to create a better, well-rounded organizational target function. I, I'm not sure, but I thought I uh, I saw something in the new the FY24 budget regarding an appropriation to the post commission. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're saying. What time is going on? That probably have to do a trend. Yeah. Well, well, I think we're going to have to go back and read the FY23. So maybe we'll, what are you recommending that we table this until we get no, I think we should vote on whether or not we want to accept John the John as the and then okay and then work out yeah uh, and then that way we can and he does serve at the commission. Okay. commission okay. yes okay so do I hear a uh, uh, motion to uh, I'll make the motion to accept the nomination of Mr. John Q. Lizama as the executive director for the post commission I second okay. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The ayes have the uh, motion carries. So we'll work on the details uh, in moving forward and uh, we will uh, properly notify Mr. Zama and, and all involved uh, on uh, where both the 
the commission is with uh, Mr. Rosales' nomination. Thank you. And we probably would have to notify Mr. Yes, try yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we're moving on to item number three, status of the post in Denver with Police One. As, as Chief Bob Camacho mentioned earlier, it's been a long time in coming, and one of the things that, that uh, is kind of like uh, bittersweet is the, is the fact that uh, uh, Dr. Richard Fee, God rest his soul, uh, was instrumental in, in helping the commission in moving towards trying to, to, to get this program implemented. And, and we, you know, keep in mind that we have a lack of funding. We actually have zero funding. We have um, maybe a couple thousand dollars for supplies, and maybe the less than that for for the uh, post commission, and then money for salary. So when you take a look at, at that, um, there really isn't anything. So what we ended up doing is we we uh, we had to network and. Uh, through the efforts of the Guam Community College and the Lieutenant Governor's Office, uh, we were able to get this thing up and moving. And special thanks to, to Ms. Bertha because she is, you don't realize it, but she is actually also uh, beholden to the, the uh, Guam Community College for the, uh, the President's Office and the, and, the, and the board, right? But she's doing what she can to help us. So uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Bertha, and um, we're, we're, we, we finally got the okay, we got the, the purchase order. There's some technical issues regarding like payments and stuff like that, but we officially have been told to go ahead and start, and that uh, now we're, we're at the uh, juncture where now uh, we will have a training schedule like what Chief Ray was talking about, to be able to have uh, your POCs uh, up and running and input. And then we'll have like a spreadsheet sent out so that you know what the template is of what to input. Um, Chief, I'm sorry. So we, we, we already paid for it? Or we're we have the money and uh, it's yeah. through a purchase order. So the, you know you have to have money in for the purchase yeah. order. So yes. Yeah. So technically the, it is paid for. So it's paid for already. Okay. So in moving forward annually. How much are, how much are we, how much is that subscription? Because I know can, this is a one time payment, right? Yeah. Just so, for the year, so it's so 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 good. And then next year we're gonna have to renew. So I mean, but that's my question though. Is post commission gonna request for this to be part of the post commission budget moving forward, or now after year one, a you're on your own, start paying for it. Mm -hmm. I need to know so I, I can budget for it, right? Yeah. So uh, I, I know what is the one and done, or yeah, and we will we will try to figure that out. I mean, I, I mean, it's hope that we can get the money um, uh, and just not have to worry about having the agencies take care of it. But let's see. Let me let me get back to you on on that particular item uh, because you know we're we're still trying to build a foundation, and if, if there's certain things that can get incorporated, because it looks like when the lieutenant governor's office is working on this we might be able to include it but i'm not making any promises because i'm the and one this, is this for a, a year subscription this is so far for the year and and they were gracious enough to say if you start let's say in march it'll be good for a year from march so what it is is that we haven't started yet so we're we're uh we're going to start soon Chief Police One is going to allow for multiple agency and multiple. How many users and agencies are there? They're aware of that. Yeah, yes. Okay, great. Yes. Very good. So that's what I'm asking that question, Chief. Yes, they're actually they're 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 prepared for that. Okay. Any other uh, concerns, questions regarding the uh, Police One? And then uh, I know that we have a do out for you guys as far as like uh, the, the template. And then the other thing is to find out how it's going to get funded. Okay. And this police one training is next Friday at 10 a.m. at the ARP. The 17th, yes. Okay, so uh, the cost for uh, the, uh, the amount that we're looking at was uh, about 77000 but it covers the, the entire executive branch. Uh, and uh, entities like the Airport Authority are already implementing it, so uh, I think we, we actually um, have more positions requested for than we have positions in the government for the law enforcement. So uh, we're well covered there. So it's about 77,000. So you divide that up between the 30 or 40 the agencies. agencies. It, it, it shouldn't even be that much. So it's about $59. Yeah. 
But that's at a 1500 estimate of, yeah, I think our last count was 1200. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, if not, then uh, thank you everybody. Uh, our next scheduled meeting, are we having uh, yeah, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna open the floor for any yeah. additional new business. <laughs> thank you for so, I wanted to, uh, anybody else? I, I have just a couple of things. So, uh, one, uh, I think for a better understanding of uh, the post commission, uh, maybe we need to develop an organizational structure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where does, you know, is it the chair, the vice chair, the, the executive director, right? And then the post commission members. Maybe if we can develop a post commission uh, organizational structure. Yes. Post it on our website. And a functional yeah, chart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another thing on the post commission website, we can also make. Uh, the, the post commission and uh, the initiatives that we yeah the, the members names are there and then also a link to the 10 gca chapter 51 and the 27 gar chapter 3. that way when, when people want to read about the post commission and, and the enabling statute yeah it's, it's there instead of having to I'm aware. I'm aware of uh, through the GCC that certain mandates are uh, like if you click on the, the hyperlink, it, it'll bring you. Yeah, there's a hyperlink. But I don't. I mean, I haven't been there recently, so yes, uh, we'll probably have to work with the Bond Community College on, on ensuring yeah, that until you know we're on our own. We've got the medical board for that now. Two, uh, I, I I offer that we invite Senator Barnett to be. Oversight Chair for Public Safety for our next commission meeting. I think there's a lot that we discuss here at the meeting that uh, we might want to know about. Uh, and we have, uh, have awareness. Uh, next, uh, can the post commission prepare a resolution for Senator Peter for life? That is Senator Peter for life. Uh, we yes. can, but the, 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 the only challenge I see is uh, number one, I mean, I can work on it. Now, the only thing is, I don't have uh, any uh, historical information or his background. I know what he used to do. I know he retired from the police department, and I know that there's certain other things that he's done uh, before becoming a senator. Now, I, if, if that's the case, I just need to come up with. We could pro you would probably, uh, the best one would be the protocol office for the legislature, because I would imagine his state fair was next Friday. Correct. Right. So they would already have been prepared a um, legislative resolution as well, which all will have his full history and life uh, story. So okay. we might work with um, that. Um, the governor's office is also doing one, so their protocol office will probably simil uh, have similar uh, info. Okay. Okay. Um, but just so you know, I guess when you said we'll cut the umbilical part from where? From GCC. We're, 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 we're uh, affiliated uh, through so GCC. So you're going to amend the law? The law will probably have to be amended. Yeah, it says GCC shall yes. be the state agency. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So these are the things that we're, we're we'll going to be on this amendment. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like the ethics commission. Right. Sir, in light of uh, Senator Pito's uh, funeral being the same day as the the training, can we move to training? Actually, yeah, I was gonna because we can have also the seventeenth. I was gonna mention that. Yes, it's yes, we brought that up. Uh, you brought it up. But but will everybody? In other words, will all your like all your training officers be assigned to 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 cover? No, but I'll be going to that state general, and I'm the one that's representing my department. You don't have any like anybody that does certifications. To, <clears throat> I need to go through this one. Because uh, the way I see it is that we need to get this thing done, and then we'll I can ask uh, Ray Rages to do is to. We're not changing the day, but maybe we'll be hours then. Uh, I can. What well, time is the train? It's from 11 to 2. 11 to 2. Uh, or 10 to 2? 10 or 11. It says no, start at 10. He mentioned start at 10. 10. 10. 10. Well, we can or it was at 9, right? You want me to. No, I can no. ask uh, Lieutenant Rages to move in a day before? Well, why don't we just move the time? I mean, are you okay moving the time? Yeah. Yes. So why don't we have to just ask um, stay here? Yeah, that one. See, that's gonna take a while. Uh, would it be 
possible to maybe ask uh, Lieutenant Regis to maybe move it to the following week? That's what I'm going to. On the Friday. You right? want? Okay. So we can. I can. I can move it to the twenty fourth. Uh, yes. Right. That's that's a Friday. 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 You're doing on a Friday? We'll have the training on a Friday? I'm not going to do okay. that, right? I'm setting my training and staff. Right? Yeah, okay, so right. uh, we will send something out. Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it more important. Yeah, to, to uh, just to. Yes. And if we can't, then yeah. we'll see about Chief. doing an additional training. Okay, Chief. Chief. I'll send somebody to yeah. next week. So. Okay, okay. But, but we'll try to move it, and if not, then uh, we'll just have another training. Are we okay with that? Okay. I feel sense of it. Okay. Uh, now, any anybody if you have any further? Uh, there, we, we while going through the requirements for CPPR. There was a topic about those slash thirty three dash two two four, and it actually impacts the post commission. Uh, let me just see if I can pull this up. Uh, so what it was is that it was all the CPPRs for certain police cycles, and with the bomb police, they had two years from the time that law passed to meet all the post requirements in order to get their post certificate. Do we know if the post commission was tracking that law and had these guys met those requirements? So as far as I am aware, personally, I trust me, this not... came out in the field and got the yeah. best price for that. I didn't know this law was out there. But well, we can do a re we can do some research into it and find out where the uh, CDPRs are at as far as where they're tracking because that's that's one of the things. If, if they're already outside of the two years, then we may need to uh, take some uh, uh, further action to try and get them into yeah, compliance. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let me just find this section. Yeah, members of the civilian volunteer police group who were recruited and sworn from the 15th to the 18th cycles have up to two years from the effective date to complete the post training requirements. Yeah, uh, any CVPR has not met the minimum qualifications of firearm safety and proficiency, physical fitness, recruitment, and background checks are not be allowed to serve in the CVPR. So, would you be able to give me a listing of your CVPRs and then that way we can do some research and see? Yeah, okay. And then, uh, you know, Bob talked about recruitment. Yes, I'm, I'm only a doctor, but. I don't know, maybe at some point when we start to develop a, a real post commission and you know having its executive direction support staff and all that. One of the things that uh, law enforcement agencies on Obama are gonna part part time with is recruitment. So maybe we need to have a like a real good one day discussion of recruitment. Uh, because you know we only think locally, right? But I mean other departments that are think nationally, internationally, globally. I mean, you know, do we can we Use post commission to advertise and indeed LinkedIn, police want, you know, all this type of job. Reciprocity. Right. Uh, because, yeah. you know, we're, we're losing, we, we lose the federal government or to the Department of Defense. Uh, and, you know, uh, the, the big goes on level because we're not recruiting. Uh, you know, we're just using DOA. Mm -hmm. But we're not using other engines, search engines, because, you know, a guy, you know, Washington is not going to use DOA website to look for a bomb. They'll be probably yeah. using Deep, right? Or LinkedIn or some some other like search engine. engine. And we're not putting ourselves out there. Uh, case in point, when as a member of the uh, post mortem commission, when we were looking for a chief medical examiner, uh, we used the medical examiner's website. They have yeah. their own dedicated website to look for. Uh, to, to recruit for me, for example. Okay. That's how we, we found one from looking for Arizona, Colorado, something like that. Yeah. It's okay, yeah, that's, I mean, the way forward is like you can't keep doing business the same way. That's insane. If, 
the results are still the same, so we should, we've got to change our paradigm. Yeah. And yeah. And just, you know, uh, food for thought as we have uh, recruitment challenges. Uh, I was reading an article, Washington, D.C., uh, that the Supreme Court please offers five to ten thousand dollars annual bonuses. And you're talking about budgets, but I mean, <laughs> just throwing it out there, we're having our time. That's one thing that you want to put on the post commission are employment opportunities with the yeah. various law enforcement. Of course, that would be nice on the post commission website, right? It's like I said, it's a new way of looking at things, I and mean, you can't just keep doing the same thing and expect, I mean, expect a different it, result. You know, when you and I went to look for a job, we went to, we went to DOE. Yeah. We started to talk through the, yeah. the, the announcements. You know, the generation we're dealing with, they probably don't even know how to thumb through announcements anymore. They don't even know where, yeah. They probably don't even know where DOA is at. They want to think. Right? They yeah. want to think. Yeah. They, they, they Google it, they type it in. Okay, okay. So, okay. Yeah, that's not too adaptive. And they don't know how to do interviews. Yeah, they can't talk to you face to face. What's their typewriter? Yeah. Oh my god, they got to ask. Or a cassette tape. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, any uh, other so announcements? For you. I have a question uh, on when GCC submitted their 2023 budget, was a post commission part of that? So they, we did get a budget for 2023. And then they would have submitted another one for 2024, right? We gotta, we gotta look, research that. Okay. But um, I, I, I think because we've been meeting with the, the Lieutenant Governor's office and we've had some discussions at that level that uh, we've come to an agreement on the way and moving forward and that eventually there will be some kind of executive direction as far as uh, the makeup of the, of, of the organization uh, for the post uh, support team, which is the executive director, right? And the two support the, the two or three support staff. Because right now there's only one funded position, and uh, the other thing is like jurisdiction of the post commission. What if there's a conflict between GCC and it's, so these are the yeah. things that have been discussed at a higher level. So eventually we'll get to that point, but I can't say anything because yeah, if so, nothing's done, then yeah. what happens on October 1? Uh, I don't know, continuing resolution, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we'll take okay, it. Let's make a motion. So we can go back. So discussion that came up is like so when we come up with a resolution, how are we gonna like vote to, to do it? Is it just gonna be informally? Because you know everything we do here we have to vote on whether or not the form and the function of the resolution is is uh, in line with uh, you know it's a technical it issue but on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. That's I mean, we'll see what we can do, but uh, if, if, if it'll be good for our first interview, we're going to have to call an emergency meeting next week. Yeah, you got to advertise it. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. Yeah. We don't have to. Okay. Stand by. So we'll do it to work it informally and then we'll just send an email off, uh, you know, uh, then give me your thoughts on whether or not officially it looks good and then we'll incorporate it because, you know, time's of the essence and yeah. Okay. okay. Any any other um, uh, alibis or? Alibis? I'm already in communication with uh, Chief Nakati to inform the tenor wages to move the 17th to the 24th. Okay. Same time, Chief. Let us know. Yeah. Okay. Same time. Anything else other than that? Um, thank you. Motion to me. Okay. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye.